Good morning. Hi. It's a brand new week. It's a brand new day. Good morning. Hi, new cubies and newbies. I am Sunshine, and this is the AB Cube Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. I am AB Cube Tutor. Uh, you can find me at um, w right here. Yeah, there's a typo in my link there. It says w. It says abcube.how. The www isn't necessary. I just put it there to because that's what people are used to seeing. So abcube.how and also abcubemethod.com is also mine. But abcube.how is easier to remember. Um, good morning. Did you guys have a nice weekend? Did you what? what did what fun things did you do? <laughs> and is the sun out where you are? <laughs> oh, you guys. I my grandbabies came over yesterday to help me. Um I'm gonna help my <laughs> their mommy their parents came over to help me. The grandbabies came over just to play. <laughs> um yeah, so um, I was, I stayed there for, that was where I stayed for a couple of weeks after my fall. And so, um, they're, <laughs> they're age three and age one and they're coming right along with their cubing. They're, they're, they're at the age appropriate level where it, uh, okay, this is color yellow. This is color blue for the one year old. And the three year old is, excuse me. Sorry, so sorry. <laughs> Didn't want to sneeze on camera. Can you solve a three by three? I can teach anyone to solve a three by three. That's my claim to fame. Um, let's put these away. Get out my three by threes. Uh, here's a two by two. Here's a three by three. Here's the four by four and the five by five. Um, and <laughs> uh, the the what you see on my screen here, the A and the B. Though that's my method for solving for teaching the Rubik's cube. Uh, all you need is formula A, formula B, and you can solve every complexity Rubik's cube. When I teach the Rubik's cube, I I used to teach start with a three, and then go okay now use that on the four by four, and they're going no you know what I'm done thank you though it was very wonderful. So now I only teach with the five or with all of them together. Um, because that way I don't have that mental. Sorry, didn't mean to <laughs> be violent with my camera there. You don't have that mental block. You learned th 312 algorithms, you know, CFOP. Well, this is a new way to learn, new, new way to solve it. When I teach, I'm gonna ask you how long it took you to learn because when I teach people uh, inside of two hours, uh, I've taught them how to solve every complexity Rubik's cube, the two by two, from the two by two up through whatever cube they want to do. You average about 17 seconds. How long does it take you to get sub a minute? Two years, okay. Um, <laughs> I am, anyone anyone who's, you know, if faster than the I can follow, I'm just, it's just magic to me. I am to in total awe of every speed cuber. I just total awe. Um, because I watched the very, I was, <laughs> I watched the very first competition on the TV <laughs> back when I was 16 <laughs> and uh, before that that was a, a determining factor in my life because before that I thought I had thought one way and after that I thought a completely different way um, back then they didn't have YouTube of course they didn't have but what they did have is, is they sold this book on the corner store corner 7-eleven and a few others as well this is the one I happened to buy and so I could solve the cube and I, you know, I could do it in about three minutes. It only took me about three minutes to solve the cube. I thought I was just amazing and, and just spectacular. <laughs> and then I watched the competition and I, I'll, I, like I said, blindingly fast. I'm like, what the, what? <laughs> and then when I, when the, the, the final, Contestant Jeffrey Jeffrey Barisano, um, twenty three point four two seconds, and I looked at my cube and I looked at the TV and I looked at my cube and I said, "Oh well," <laughs> and I put my cube down because I'm like, ah, "That is, that is not me," 
but uh, I, I picked it up again after about a month <laughs> because <laughs> it was too fun. I went in a different direction. A lot of people, there, once, once the, when the cube was new, it's like, where do we go with this? What's next? And there was a bunch of things that, bunch of, bunch of, de bunch of uh, ways that we thought we were gonna go. Um, one of those ways was, oh, it's, I've packed it away again. You followed me, thank you, that's so nice. Um, one of these ways was they turned it into a game. They turned the cube into a game. Where is my cube? Oh, here it is. This is a blast from the past. This, w this was Rubik's game. I'm gonna put it on the camera here. Ha -ha. This is from 1982. Oh, can I see a solve? Sure. Yeah. This, anyway, this they they made they made it a game by giving you little pegs to put in each piece in the pieces, and you claimed colors and you put pieces of pegs in the the colors, and twisted the cube, and then the first person to get three in a row, horizontal, diagonally, or uh, vertically, won the game. Didn't catch on. Can you see a can I see a solve? Sure. Uh, do to do to do. All right. Uh, I <laughs> I am not fast. Uh, my average, I my best time on a three by three is about a minute and a half. But when you consider that that's down from three <laughs> from three out three minutes <laughs> thirty years ago, <laughs> forty years ago, <laughs> that's progress. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're that we're happy there. Um, yeah. So um, when I teach, I teach in I teach. Uh, it takes. Well, people come over to my house. Hi, Sunshine. I hope you. I am well. Are you well? I hope you are well as. I hope you are well as well. Try saying that three times fast. So, um, people come over. I spend an hour teaching them just the the just the corners. Yay! I teach them just the corners, and then on. Then then I I say, well, that was awesome. Now now do it on this cube. Now do it on this cube. Now do the same thing on this cube. Now scramble it and try it again because I I want you to get completely comfortable with the corners before we go on. And in that first hour, they're completely comfortable with the corners. I send I send them off with a, a big cube and I say, here, um, formula B, you've been working on the outside columns, but if you work on an outside inside column, it's gonna move the edges. If you work on two inside columns, it's gonna move the centers, but either way, it's still a, a top row and two columns. And so play with that and then come back. And they come back. <laughs> And they have a question, it's usually parody because they've, they've you know, and so I, I answer what their question is and then we just solve cubes and they leave total two hour teach time, but most of it's just play. And they know, they're confident, they know they can pick up any size cube and put it down solved. So that's just way fun for me. Um, see a solve, okay, I'm not fast, but what I usually do, Okay, and I used to use, I had, I don't know what the beginner's method is now, but I think it's similar to what this was, uh, but uh, also I've noticed not a whole lot of people actually teach the cube. Um, most people just say, hey, go watch this person's YouTube video and learn the way I did. <laughs> and they, they're more, they're more a, a coach than a tutor. You know, oh, here's how you can cut slip. Here's how you can shave th th three point point three 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 tenths of a second off your score, off your time. This is how you can do that. Most people coach. I actually teach non take non cubers, and teach and tutor them. And so I have, so far, so far there is only one person that I have not been able to teach, and that's my sister, and it's because she's as stubborn as I am. <laughs> I said, oh, I'd love to teach you. She said, I don't think I can learn. I'm like, well, let's, you can do one try. And she's like, okay, sure. And then it's like, you know, a couple minutes in, she's like, you know what? This just hurts my brain. I'm just not for me. Thank you. So I'm like, okay. But everyone else, everyone who's ever want, actually wanted to learn, I gave her a one by one cube and she's happy. <laughs> everyone who's wanted to learn, uh, I have no problem. I have taught within, within a two hour teach time. So... Dem what do I do? I'm going to walk you through it, um, which is 
<laughs> my least favorite part of YouTube tutorials is they take a scramble and they walk they talk you through what they did and they think that they've just taught you but if your cube doesn't look like their cube then it's not the same thing and so um, if you go check out my tutorial you can find it at wix at abcube.how uh, I also have a YouTube channel you can just check out my bio my links in the bio um, you can find me you can find me on Wikipedia that's a, that's fun I'm happy about that but uh, so when I do my when I when I do my tutorials I have four scrambled cubes and I teach the corners I teach each step is its own video so uh, the, the step of bringing the first color to the top that's one video and I do it on all four cubes so whatever cube you have in your hand it's more likely that I'm showing you something that you can relate to so all right I start with yellow because why not uh, I used to be color neutral but when I'm in creating this formula um, many of my alpha testers said don't make me pick a color tell me what to use so I chose yellow because every cube has yellow including the non the non cubes and the non standard cubes the void cube etc uh, they don't all have white some of them have some black cubes have white stickers some white cubes have black stickers so but th they're each opposite yellow so I start with yellow and then I pick a corner that has the yellow on it and I hold it under my left thumb top front left and I'm going to make the rest of the cube match that cu match that QB because that's the one I selected so I am all powerful and that one's correct and the rest of the cube is not because I selected it so I look at the other side the next corner and is there a yellow pyramix has yellow but not white so you are right okay pyramid that's the pyramid one right okay I have not tried ABQ method on the pyramid yet. I used to saw I solved the pyramid back in the eighties, no problem. Um, but I've forgotten how to do things because I'm old. So I start with yellow. Okay, is there a yellow? There's yellow on this corner. My this my left thumb is going to project it. Is there a yellow on this corner? The answer is yes or no. If the answer is yes, then the formula A will bring. Well, if it's on the top, then I go to the other column. I start somewhere else because it's already solved. If it's not on the top, A will bring it to the top. And if there's not a yellow there, then I look underneath to see if there's a yellow somewhere on this corner. And if there is not, I rotate the bottom a quarter turn until the answer is yes. So as long as there's a yellow in one of these two pieces, formula A will bring it to the top face. One row, one column, bottom row, right column. And it's just it's for every, it's a mathematical zero. It's a commutator where for everything that it's not going to miss up the cube. It's only going to move the pieces that you want to move. So this cube is going to come up here. So I move it away from the action. I move the space down. I move the cube into the space, QB into the space, and the cube in the space back up to the top. So that's formula A. Is my yellow on top? Not yet. So I do it again. Out, down, in. Up. Is my yellow on top? Not yet, so I do it again. Out, down, in, up. Is it on yellow on top? Yes! So, uh, my first step is to bring yellow to the top on all four corners. I'm only looking at corners, I'm only looking at yellow. So, I slide this out of the way. This is not a speed method, it's not a shortest move method, but uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the secret on how to solve the cube. So, uh, and yes, of course, for the first right row, you can just muscle things into place if you want to. Um, but when I'm teaching, I teach the first four corners the exact same way you do the second four corners. So I'm not, um, there's nothing for people to remember or figure out. So out, down, in, up. Slide the top to protect it. Is there a yellow here? No. Is there a yellow here? Yes. As long as there's a yellow one of these two places, out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up, and yellow is on top. That's the first step. And I, then I say, okay, now do that on this cube and this cube and this cube and this cube. When they're comfortable with that, then we look at the second, the, uh, the other colors of the corners, because the corners have three colors. Ye or yellow is on top, that's great. And if I want to, I can put my center there as well. But I can do that later on, so it doesn't matter. So now I look to see if the sides match, because the, the tops all, ma all, all match. Now I look to see if the sides match. Blue does not equal red, green does not equal blue, red does not equal green, and orange, but orange equals orange. Now at this point, <coughs> one of three things will happen. Where's my water? Where's my drink? 
I knocked it over when I was searching in my cube box. One of three things will happen. Either all four sides match, or none of the sides match, or one of them matches. You cannot have two sides that match and the other two not match unless you've been peeling off stickers, which is not advisable. So the side that matches faces away from you, and, we're, and now that we're going to formula B now, because A brings a piece to the top and twists it around if you needed, B moves pieces around. And so since two of them are correct, and, one, and since one, two cubes match each other and the other two do not, um, we're going to move three pieces around and then they will match. So top row, <coughs> two columns, we're working on the corners, so we're going to use the columns that affect the corners. So slide first up, slide second up, slide down, slide down. Every other move is horizontal, every, hor every other horizontal is the reverse of the one before it, so um, so it looks like, it's like, oh no, I messed up my yellows. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Everything is fine. We already know how to bring the color back to the top again. So that's formula A. Out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up. Slide it and keep going with your formula A. And we're, we're not rotating the cube. We're only, twist, only moving the top layer so that the cube stays stable. And if it does, then the, other, the, the bottom of the cube does not get altered, which does not matter at the beginning, but does matter at the end uh, later on. So as long as you've not rotated the cube, then, then everything's fine. So when the yellow comes back to the top again, the corners match. And yay! Uh, there's no order, <coughs> no order of operations, but I do corners first. Uh, so my yellows are, are correct. I put them face down, and I'm going to abandon the yellows, and I'm going to work on my whatever color is opposite yellow. And <coughs> for different, for different, <coughs> excuse me, for different cubes, it's a different color. Standardized, standardized color red colors is it's it's going to be white. Um, and my yellow, my whites all happen to be man magically on top. But if they were not, formula A would bring them there. So, a red red does not equal blue. Orange equals orange. So orange is my color match. It's the only one face it away from me and I'm going to do formula B and when I do formula B as long as I don't rotate the, cu the cube or drop it in mid 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 pattern uh, these yellow corners I'm we've, I'm abandoning them they're going to protect they're going to fend for themselves so slide up slide up slide down slide down that was formula B and formula B did not mess up the corners okay and now I need to do formula a to bring the white to the top and it's going I'm going to bring the white to the top I'm going to do that and slide the top so I'm going to keep working with the bottom row on the right column until my whites on top again and if I'm if I but if I look at my yellows halfway through because I don't it's like oh no I messed up the bottom no you didn't you, 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 form, formula A to bring the colors back to after B is going to be a multiple of six times which means <coughs> that the bottom is not going to be affected. It's going to be affected, but it's going to resolve itself the way it was. So you don't have to worry about most, most, uh, most, oh, and then, hold on, I'll get back. And then, so, so the first four, yellow four corners are correct to each other. The gr white four corners are correct to each other. All you need to move is the top until the top and the bottom are correct to each other. And boom, you're done. We can set the, center there now if we want to uh, because it's easy to do at this point in time if we don't do it though it's okay this is a pretty good thank you thank you I think so as well I'm rather proud of myself um, and like I said I have <laughs> I have successfully taught everyone who's wanted to learn so far so the corners are correct to each other and when back in the 80s we used to work we always worked around the center because the center was one piece and it could not move to itself. So we were to work around the center because that was the only stable in, our, in, in the environment. Um, that went out the window when we went to a four by four <coughs> because the, col the centers were no longer stable. Not, not everyone can say they made a method to solve the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> True, 
most people there's there's as many people who s d there's as many ways to solve Rubik's cubes as there are people there are Rubik's cubers because you know and most people take someone else's method and then adapt it to how they want which truth be told <laughs> is actually how I came up with this method I <laughs> not totally <laughs> I, I, I did not I did not come up with I did not say how can I solve Rubik's Cube and come up with this method what I did was I came I had a 5 by 5 that I could not solve the last the centers for and so I found a tutorial that would teach me how to solve the what for me was the last step what for everyone else is the first step because they do work centers out but what for me was the last step I found a tutorial that showed me how to move two center pieces or it's not really two center pieces it's really three center pieces because two of the pieces are the same color so it looks like it's two but there's never never three never two there's always three so I took this myth I took that I took the those eight that commutator that solved my last step and I wrote it down on paper, and then I translated that paper and the, the letters into arrows. You make sense, yeah, senders. Everyone has their own different way. Um, but so I, I, so I drew it on a piece of paper so I could see because <clears throat> my brain works visually more than translating the letters. You know, because you have to translate in your head that, uh, first of all, clockwise and counterclockwise um, I have to be looking at the face to see which way is clockwise and counterclockwise it's not intuitive in my head uh, I do have I, I am on the spectrum uh, so you have to look at each side for, see which is clockwise which is counterclockwise and in this book plus was clockwise and minus was counterclockwise and then it became just the letter was clockwise and the letter prime was counterclockwise but you have to know that right clockwise is parallel to left counterclockwise which confuses my poor little brain. So I just did, I did arrows, which ended up looking something like formula B there. Only it had like more lines in it because it was a five by five. And so I looked at it and saw, okay, only one row, only only two columns are being moved. So let's, let me narrow that, that down. What does it look like if the line, the black line just represents all of the cube that's not being turned, however big the cube is. And the arrow represents the one column that is being turned. So, I said, well, if I take that, if I take that, which moves these center pieces around, what happens if I do it on a two by two? And so I tried up, up, down, down, and I saw that, okay, what that did is it moved my corners. It's like, oh, well, I have these dozen algorithms that use corners. I have one for clockwise, one for counterclockwise, one for diagonal, one for, you know, I've got all of these things that I do that do corners, but... If I do one, the formula B once, it goes clockwise. If I do formula B twice, it goes counterclockwise. And if I do it three times, it's back to the to where it was in the beginning. So hey, that means that if I use formula B for my corners, I can throw away these algorithms I've memorized. That that seems simpler to me. What happens if I do it? To, if I use two other columns, so I did the outside and an inner column up, up, just pick the col columns at random to see what happened. Oh, that moves exactly three pieces around and they're edges. Well, I have these algorithms I've memorized that work on edges. That's much easier, I have trouble reading the, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. And then the two center, I already knew that the two center columns was gonna move the centers around. So I'm going, okay, this, that looks like everything that the cube needs to do. I wonder if I can do this how much can I do with just formula B? <laughs> well, I had to throw in formula A because you can solve the entire three by three with just formula B, but you have to keep in mind, you have to keep in juggling your head what, which, what, which twists they're going, which is gonna land at the right place and things like that. So th throwing back in formula A uh, made it easier. And then I, so then I, that became my method. I didn't start out to solve the cube. I just, I started out with the method and said the formula and said, what happens when I do this? And I went from there. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun, guys. All right, so corners are done. I've been training my brain to look for yellow and white, so I'm gonna keep looking for yellow and white. So I'm going to hold the cube. Uh, the corners dictate what color the faces is going to be. So I'm going to hold the cube so that yellow and white are left and right. 
and I'm going to look for yellow or white somewhere in the middle area, which in a 3x3 three three is one column wide, on a 5x5 five five is more columns wide, but I hold the cube so that yellow and white are left and right, and I look for something in the middle that, where's my, look for something in the middle that has a yellow or white, and I'm going to work with that one, because I've been, I've trained my eyes to look for yellow and white, so we're going to keep doing it. So here's a, here's a cube, yellow and white are left and right by the, the corners. Here's a cube that has yellow on, white on it, and white's on top, so I bring the corners to match the front, and then I determine which direction it's going to go. It's white, so it's not going to the yellow side, it's going to the white side. Okay, so one row, two columns. The first column is where I want it to land. So is that, that's, this is the first column. If I wanted to go over here, this would be the first column. Second column is where the, where the QB is. So top row, first up, back, second up, reverse down, reverse down and that placed it. Now my first horizontal move is always going to be uh, away from the action so that it doesn't get, so that it can move back in safely. So here's a yellow and red, yellow and white are left and right, either direction. Corners match the front, it's going in the yellow direction. So away from the action, first up, back into the action, and then this is my second up is where it is. Away, down, in, down. So that's there. Um, can you solve a Megamix? Okay, um, one of these, these are the minxes. I don't remember, I'm, I'm a stupid American, I don't remember metrics, so I don't remember which one is called which. But the, is, is, is this one the Mega, the seven by? Or is this? This is the Terra. Okay. Is this the Mega then? The 5 by? Yes. Okay. Um, the answer is yes. I can solve the minxes. And I solve them also just using formula A and formula B. Um, the, those, with those two, I can solve <coughs> the minxes, whatever they may be. Um, because if I want to move... It, there's, okay, on the 2x2 two two, there's just the corners, same as with the cube. On the 3x3 three three, you add the centers and the edge, absolute edges, um, or the star parts, same, same with the 3x3. Three three. And so you've added a couple of pieces. When you go to the 4x4, four four, I don't have a 4x4, four four. I've got to buy a 4x4. Four four. When you go to the 5x5, five five, you add the edges and the, the non-star centers diagonal centers um, so you have to know how to do that and then when you get when you get more then you get you know etc so um, the corners can be solved using formula B top row two columns the outside columns slide up slide up slide down slide down and that moves only what what did I do? Okay. That moves three corners around, like clockwise. And there's five corners, so it's not, not most of the corners, but you just, and so again, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and now they're counterclockwise, and once more, they're back to start. So I can move the corners using formula B. I can twist the corners using formula A, And as long as it's a multiple of six, it doesn't. So it only moves the corner the corners I want to move. Okay. Um, so then we need the the, the okay. Um, the centers. There's an order of operations. I can do the okay. Formula. Okay. So this piece right here. Easy for me to say, you guys. Okay. So this piece right here. I want to move it to this side. So, top row, where it wants to land, where it begins. So it should be top row, this column, this column. So up, up, down, down. And it did move these three pieces around, but it also moved the corners around. Now I can set, I can set the corners separately. Up, 
up, down, down, again, up, up, down, down, okay, they're in the right place but they need to be twisted, let's do that's formula A, slide the top, keep going, and then reset the top. So I can move just three edge pieces, the star pieces, uh, but, I, but it has c collateral damage. So if I do them when I've already solved, the, the, the corners are solved, I have to resolve the corners. But if I do them before I've done the corners, it doesn't matter. So on the minxes, I do the star parts first, and then everything else, the corners can be, can be managed separately like the, these these pieces. can Formula B on these ones does just move three pieces and only three pieces around. So it's only the, it's only the star parts that have a, a collateral damage because it's the column is odd shaped. So it gives collateral damage just because of the nature of the beast. But if I wanted to do this, this so that's the center and the tips and the corners. And then when you go to a larger cubes, you've got these, uh, the, you've got the centers here as well, the diagonal centers. And you also have the, uh, the, the, di the edges to do as well. Um, let me demonstrate what the, if I move one, I move this piece. Where's my, I have a blue sticky that I use to mark what my eyes are following so you guys can follow what I'm doing. And I just lost it. Here it is, stuck on my, <laughs> stuck here. All right, so, all right, here's an example. Here's a pink, here's a cube. You find a cube that's not where it wants to be. Here's a cube, this cube. This pink wants to go to the other side, okay? Um, so, and this blue wants to come down. So I'm going to line, I'm going to line up the cube so that this piece is going to go up here and this piece is gonna come down. It won't come down here, it's gonna come down here. And, but it's, but it is actually always moving three pieces. But, so the, I've lined the top, top row, I've lined it up and then I'm following this piece. I go up, slide the top so it's in a different column. Okay, if I go this way, it's the same column, it doesn't work. So I have to slide it to into a different column and then this is my second column, so that goes up. Then I reverse down, reverse, down, and that moved this piece up to here, okay, and then I reset my stars. Okay, so now it wants to go up to here, so again, I'm going to line it up so that it will land here, up, up, down, down, set the top again, and then set the front because I moved it. Okay, so you can move, you can move, um, moving any of the corner pieces, the, whether they be center or edge or corner, uh, does not, it, the formula B only moves three and, three and only three always, so formula B works just fine. Uh, so you do the, you have to do the centers, the star pieces first. <coughs> now, parodies, let's talk parodies. A parody is a lie. <coughs> it is when there are two pieces and only two pieces that need to be interchanged and formula B always moves three pieces around. Now on the centers it doesn't matter because two of the, you can swap color the two of the same color so it looks like you're swapping two but you're swapping three. Um, but for the corners and the edges you can have two pieces and only two pieces. <coughs> the the it's uh, they're, they're, whatever the parody looks like, whether it's corner, whether it's edge, whether it's opposite edges, whether it's adjacent edges, whether it's edges on different sides of the cube. Anytime you have two pieces, the third piece, there's always three pieces. The third piece that you can't see is the third piece that you cannot see. So wh whatever, whatever row touches the parody, that row is a quarter turn off. You can't tell because we no longer have an absolute center that is uh, immovable. So you make that, you rotate that, that slice one quarter turn and then solve the edges again, and that parity has dissolved, and 
<laughs> it's just gone. Poof. You do have to if you uh, if you've already solved the centers, you have to reset the centers. But they only looked correct. They weren't correct. If they were correct, you wouldn't have had a parity. So that you can have a parity on a on any cube that ha that has a an absolute center that's invisible. Uh, a void cube as well. It's, even though a void cube is a three by three, you can have that. So um, on a, on the minks though, on the stars, you cannot have a, vo a, par a parity. And the reason why is because it's five sided instead of four sided. Um, <coughs> for example, on we're going to use this to demonstrate. If your center is a quarter turn off, if I tried to make a cube that had this color pattern, uh, I would get a parity because that's a quarter turn off. If I had two quarter turns off, an even number of tur quarter, quarter turns off, I could create a cube with this pattern. This is boxes. We're all familiar with that. So if, there, if, if you're an odd number of turns off, you have a parity. If you're an even number of turns off or not off at all, you don't have a parity. Now, so with, a, with this, Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, um, even numbers, no parity. Odd numbers are parity. But with the, with the minks, with, um, you cannot have an odd number because what's an odd number this way, one quarter turn this way, was four quarter turns this way. <coughs> so you cannot have a parity on the minkses. Um, you can do the centers. I'm going to move a center piece to show you how the, the star here. I'm going to move, put this piece up here. So I'm going to mark, where is my piece? Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to move this piece, all right? So I go, no, I've already shown you that one. I'm going to move this piece, okay? I go up, slide into a different column. Second up is the middle reverse down reverse down okay so that moved this that moved the pieces and then I set the top the way it had been and so this piece moved here this piece moved here okay so you can so you can do the the edges and that does change the the, the star pieces do change uh, the corner pieces as well but, uh, so yeah, um, to do the edge pieces, so you can, that's the corners, that's the, abs the, star, the star tips. So the star pieces and the corners, I've shown you how to do. Um, let's do uh, the corners, I showed you to do the corners. Edge, okay, all right, here is, okay, I'm, I'm doing, I'm gonna do in the whites, okay? So I'm looking opposite, looking on the other side of the cube, I find a white piece. Ah, don't do that. Just stick. There we go. So I'm going to move this piece down. Uh, first, I'm going to move it above where it wants to land. Okay, it wants to land right here. So, so I'm going to bring it down, and which is which is really bringing it forward. Here's what formula B does. Formula B for the edges moves three pieces around. Uh, this piece goes to the side. The front comes back, comes forward, and this piece goes to the back. It's the exact same as what happens on a cube, but it's we're centering. These are the pieces that are going to move. So, formula B: top row, first column, second column. Okay, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. So that moved this piece from here to here, and. But I want it to, want it to be here, so I'm going to move it from here to here, which is going to move these three pieces: top row, first column, second column, up, up, down, down. Okay. Now I want this to go here, but I know that these are the pieces that these three pieces that are going to move. So I'm going to move this down here, and so these three pieces are going to move. This one's going to end up there. Up, up, down, down, set, the, set it again, and that piece is there. So it's, it, it's more like knights jumping on a chessboard. You have to like hop it till it gets to where it wants to be, um, rather than the queen moving on a, on a chessboard, which is the difference between the cube and the 
the minxes. But yes, a, just A and just B will solve every complexity minx and every complexity cube. Let me show you what I did. This is pretty. This is my 10 by move. This is my 10 by. I decorated it for Christmas. It's half solved and half not solved. The red, the red, white, and green are Christmas colors for me in my head. So I decorated my cube for Christmas. <laughs> So that's fun. Uh, if you have, it does not work on everything. It does not work on shapeshifters. Uh, it does work on some on some bind banded cubes though. Uh, this works on my three by three by nine, my weight eight and three by three by nine. Wait, wait. You said what? What is the? What did you say what for? You said yes, well, and then what? Oh, oh, you're my pretty, my pretty Christmas thing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so any questions, comments, queries, posers, denials? It would take me 10 hours to try to solve a 10 by 10. Uh, for me, the people are like, is that harder than this one? I'm like, no, it's not harder. It's just takes just takes longer because it takes me an average of about, you know, let's say five to 10 seconds per piece that I'm placing and that just has more pieces to place so but it does it takes forever I get bored and I put it down and I come back to it later I get bored because it does take forever which is why this piece right here this one right here <laughs> I have to hide it from myself because if I see it I'm going to scramble it and then if I scramble it I'm going to solve it and then once I've scrambled it it takes forever to solve and I get bored I can solve, but it takes 30 minutes. I can solve, but it takes, oh, you have seven by. That's fun. Um, seven by, I have, <laughs> my favorite, I think my favorite is the seven by. Um, because it's just, it's just enough. Uh, it, it's, it's got enough that I, that I, it's, I'm challenged by it. And it's not too massive that I get bored with it. So I love, I, I, I will scramble and solve my seven by all the time. I think it's my favorite. Uh, and I have no idea how long it takes me. I don't time myself. <laughs> but for me, sorry, where are you going? There we go. Um, so, oh, oh, right, right, right. I was saying that uh, some people went fast. Some people went in different directions. So like they created the game. Um, some people went in the direction of creating mosaics. Uh, pictures using the cube as pixels <laughs> and that was really impressive to everybody um, but my I, my direction I would I found I, I would have my cube with me everywhere and strangers would say oh wow did you take the stickers off or did you take it apart <laughs> and I'm like no I solved it no you didn't you didn't solve it no one can solve the cube so I, they, they would take my cube from me and they would scramble it. You're never going to get this one. Because they think in their head, non-cubers think that I have to figure out what they did and reverse it. Which is not the case. I don't have to think of what, figure out what they did and reverse it. I just have to put it back into place. So, um, so yeah, everyone was like, wow. And, and um, square one. Okay, I bow to you because I cannot solve. <laughs> I had a square one and I tried to figure it out and I'm like, this is not me. I cannot figure this out, and I gave it away to one of my one of my students, one of the people I've taught, who <laughs> thought he didn't like cubes. <laughs> he's on the on the on the spectrum, and he only wants to do things he's really, he know already knows he's going to be good at. So he didn't want to try the cube, and so I said, "Here, you know, put the cube in his hand." I drew the the A and B on the napkin, <clears throat> and, and I had him just do those formulas, and he's like. Oh, I understand this. <laughs> and then two weeks later, he was sub 20 seconds. <laughs> um, but it but this does work on in three by three by nine. Um, so I'm really proud of that. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, that feels like a good place to pause unless anyone has any questions. Wait, what? Okay, translate. What does what mean?
Oh, it's right about that. You want me, wanted me to show it to you? All right, hold on. Hold on. I'll be right back. I have an I'll be right back button. Okay, here I am. Um, this is my backpack. It has, it's a, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful cute backpack. So, I lied, it's in my purse, not my backpack. One more second. Okay, here's my purse. I love my purse. Uh, Keychain, or coin purse. Um, okay, here we go. It, it's I can't keep it in its I keep it in its carrier. Thank you. I love my purse. This is a three by three by nine, and when I take it out. People say, oh, no, that's just sticker. That's just lines. It's just uh, the pattern of the three by three. No, it's not. You can turn it. You can turn. Da, 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 da. Okay. So, and uh, <laughs> I, I got it, challenged myself to it, could not figure it out. And so I went online and I spent a month watching a different tutorial every day, literally trying to figure out. <laughs> and there are tutorials for it. But the, the, the closest I could get was this algorithm will move these pieces and these pieces and these pieces. So hold your, your cube so that that will be advantageous and then do this algorithm and then reset it to how it was and see what to do next. And I'm like, I am not that smart. I am not that smart. So after a month, I'm like, forget it. I can't do it. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. I can solve a nine by nine, so why can't I solve a three by nine? So I got my big cube, a big cube like, like so, and said, I'm just going to pretend that I cannot move the whites or the yellows. I'm just gonna keep the yellow and white left and right, and I can't move them, and how, what do I do? And so I figured out, I realized, you know, you can't just move, formula A moves the top, and then goes up a column. Well, you can't go up a column if the yellows are banded. So the move, the different, the only, I said, well, all right, fine. So that's easy. So it's every horizontal, instead of one, will be two. And then I can, you, I have access to all of my columns individually. So I made that one change of, to adapted the formula B to have just one column. To, every horizontal was always two instead of one. And then with my big cube, I did formula B and so said, oh, what happens with that? Oh, this is what happened. Because I did it to a solved cube so I could see, oh, there's Kitty in the background. So I could see what it did. And then I had mastered the three by nine overnight. So it took me a month to master it overnight. <laughs> and this is because I just went back to my own pattern. So the A and B does do this, which is fun. Here's what, here's what the formula B looks like on this okay so top up 
top second up would be uh, clearly is, is dictated by the cube. You don't have to memorize what which columns do what. You just have to, I'm going to undo this so I can show you. Um, you. You don't have to figure out, memorize that these two columns are going to move these ones and these two columns are going to move these ones. You just pick the cube you want to move and apply formula B to it and the two columns are the two columns that affect that piece, where that piece intersects. So what this one does, so up, up, down, down. Okay, what did that do? You are smarter than most people. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. You have an inch long Rubik's Cube. Oh, that's so cute. I have a one by one. <laughs> I give them away to people who think they can't do it. Okay, so what did this do? Uh, this moved edges. It moved these two edges, but it clearly moved a different one because you can't ever move two edges. So it moved these three edges. It moved these two, no, these two centers, sorry. These three centers these two edges and these two edges. So I'm like, okay, well, I work from the outside in, so I'm going to do edges before centers. So uh, four centers are, four edges are being moved, but I don't really care what's happening on the right if only one happens on the left, so I can move work with one piece at a time on the left. So I started, so I would started doing that. I would, I would just work on half the cube and I would just find a piece on the right and one at a time just put it on the left where it's supposed to be. And <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and then once the, okay, that, that was one. Let me do it again. Up, up, down, down. And again, it moved these three centers, these two and these two. So if I want to work on the edges, I can do, work on them one at a time to the left. If I want to work on centers, I just do multiple, do B twice, and then the, the edges stay the same, and the centers get moved. So th that's how I figured out how to do it. An inch long, that's, that's about that big. That's so cute. That's so cute, little tiny ones. Um, so yes, everywhere I go, not everywhere I go. I've never taken this purse out in public and had someone not had someone say, I love your purse. So I'm very, very happy about that. Um, and then I have, this is, I have, I have mirror cubes. This is one of my two favorite mirror cubes because it has two solve states. You can solve it as a cube, in which case it looks like an abstract piece of art, and you can solve it by colors, in which case it looks like an abstract sculpture. So the <laughs> it's always is always waiting to be solved <laughs> as two things. Um, so that's my fa that's one of my favorites. My other favorite, I have several mirror cubes. I have a two by two mirror cube. I have several threes, and I have a five by mirror cube. This is my five by mirror cube, and it's, it was just 3D printed over a basic five by five. It's not commercially available. Someone just did it. Not manufactured, commercial manufacturing. Someone just did it. Um, and then my other, my my favorite is the GAN because I love. I did not. This is my first magnetic cube. I did not realize what the, what I was missing from magnets. Um, I love. I love the magnets. So, so those are my toys. Oh, speaking of toys, um, I can e anyone here tell me? Oh, let's see, a B cube, a cold cuber left. It looks like. Oh no, there's a lot of people. Hello, hi. If you've just joined me, I'm Sunshine. I didn't. I didn't update my viewers list. I didn't know you guys were all there. Um, can any one of you tell me? what this cube is. I mean, I know it's a Mega Minx, but do we know who manufactured it? Because I am not happy with this cube. Yes, this Minx. Um, this is the only one of my cubes that I have to pamper and treat with kid gloves and as fragile because when this, when this drops, if it lands on a corner, which it's most likely to do, the corner piece splits apart and I have to gather up the corner pieces and I have to put them back together again. Now that's fine if I didn't have a three-year-old grandbaby because <laughs> I have a three-year-old grandbaby who was here last night, yesterday. 
and he dropped it and the of course the corner corner scattered he's like here grandma um and i don't want to have a cube that i have to say oh don't play with that honey that's grandma's cube you can't play with that one um because why? <laughs> I want my kid to be able. To, I want my grandbabies to be able to play with it, and this one fall, comes apart too easy. It's happened like a dozen times already, and I keep. I, I'm an expert at putting the corner pieces back together again if I don't lose them, but I. There should not be a cube in existence that a grandbaby can't play with because <laughs> how else are they gonna <laughs> learn and have fun? So I am. Next time it comes apart, I'm going to have to like get some nail polish or some kind of super glue and glue them on the inside so when they get into place they won't come off again but then i'll have to do that for what there's there's 10 20 20 pieces 20 times until it stops coming apart uh, or i can just go buy another one by a different manufacturer that's not going to come apart because my grandbaby should be able to play with my cube <laughs> that's just the way it is so I need to I need to replace this or something because yeah I don't want to. <laughs> it brings up memories of my childhood. We used to go to my grandma's house every time we go to my grandma's house. There was a card table set up in the living room, and a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, in the middle of the card table, and there was three to six ladies sitting around the table laughing and chatting and telling stories and having fun and I'm like this is where I want to be this is where the social interaction is I want to be here and so I would gather around that table and uh, I would try to I would try too and my little arm and they're like oh <laughs> Sandra you're, 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 you're in the way can you can you I need to look at this spot can you and so I, ha I learned how to just watch and I could figure it out with just my eyes and then I'd see the piece that one goes there and then I'd, go, I'd reach in and I'd go pick it up and put it down and I'd be out of the way so no one can complain about me and I would do that and every couple minutes later every few minutes one of my aunts would say I cannot for the life of me find the piece that goes right wait where'd that go from <laughs> so I was having fun I thought it was great and they they saw that I liked puzzles silly them they saw that I like puzzles so they went and got me look we've got this for you it's your own puzzle and it was one of those little 50 piece puzzles you know with a not very interesting picture on it and I'm like no thank you and they're like no this is your very own you you like puzzles now you can do this on your own you can do this this is your for your very I'm like okay fine I'm like I don't want it and they're like well if you can if you can figure out how to put this together then you can come and play with us at the big table I'm like Challenge accepted. So I go and I put it together. I did it. And I come back. Now I'm going to play over here. They're going, no, but you have your own puzzle now. I'm going, I want my own puzzle. <laughs> but you have your own puzzle now. I thought that it was a rite of passage. I got to go play with them. And so I was very upset because they just, I was, they didn't want me under the hip. And so I don't want a toy that my grandbabies feel like they have, they can't play with because they're, <laughs> um, when they were little, I got them. Oh. This is a baby Rubik's cube. It's plush, but it's it's plastic underneath, and it turns like a regular Rubik's cube. Um, I didn't didn't buy that. I bought thought I was buying. Um, I it's a little bit bigger than when I got them. It's a little bit bigger than them, and it's eight corners, and they're held together by strings in the middle, and so you can you can solve it like a three by like a two by two, or you can also just twist the corners. So they have that, and I got that them when they were little. And they've had they had one of that for a while. I'm um, like, oh look, here's a real cube that looks like your cube. And but uh, when I was I was I stayed with them for two weeks after my fall, and so the ki the kids had I had my cubes of course, and so the kids were just had they were just fascinated by my cubes, you know. And so we you know we're like this is color red, this is color yellow, yes, and that's the same color as your shirt, you know that kind of thing. But the one year old. The, the void cube that I had it was just the right size for the one year old to be able to grab onto the void cube and carry around and so she <laughs> she, she claimed the void cube and I, I gave and I had a, I had a, a three by three that uh, that I I had to re, re I had to refurbish and so I gave that so I gave both both of them now have a genuine cube and they 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 both have they're they're happy carrying it around. The one year old can carry around the void cube, and the three year old can carry around the regular three by three. 
and it gives new meaning to speed solving because <laughs> they'll take the cube and they'll twist it and they give it back to me and they want me to solve it and I'll get like three or four turns in and they'll take it back and so I have to try to solve it in between the times they give it to me and they take it away. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, anyway, so you guys, it's been great. Uh, thank you for, if you're, if you follow me, great. Thank you so much. If you don't, why not? I'm nice. I don't bite. <laughs> um, I will be back. To, I'm here every weekday morning. I'm here Saturday mornings. I'm here Friday evenings. Um, and I love to chat more than I love to monologue. So I'm really grateful for, for people who talk with me. And I like to teach more than I like to demonstrate. So bring me your non-cuber friends if you wanna and if they wanna. And I can, I'm can i set up to teach in real time uh, over the internet. And as long as I can use it to build my brand stream on my thing, then it's free. Uh, so. So I'm, I, I have a Zoom, which I'll be happy to send to whoever wants to learn. And then I Twitch capture the Zoom, and so I can see their cubes, they can see my cubes, everything's fun. Um, so in the meantime, I gotta go have breakfast. I gotta go feed my face. So go have fun, go, be go have your day, go be nice to yourself, uh, get sunshine, drink water, and <laughs> I'll be back here tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, you guys.